Okay, last time in part one we learned about fuzzy measures and fuzzy integrals. Um, and then we, did, we ended with an example where we aggregated a bunch of numbers to answer the question, of like, what is the quality of the food at McDonald's? What if the evidence is not just numbers? What if the evidence is intervals or fuzzy sets? What can we do then? And so that's what we're going to answer this time. So for ex example, what if we had the question, how many bottles of wine should we purchase for the reception? And you ask this question to a bunch of your friends, and you know your friends give you answers like, oh, I don't know, between 20 and 30? Well, this is an interval. So how do then do you aggregate a bunch of intervals together? Like if one, one person says between 20 and 30, another person says between oh, 10 and 15, another person says 18 to 23, or whatever it happens to be, how do you aggregate those together? And then, or what if somebody says, oh, about 25? Well, this is probably something like a fuzzy number that you know has a triangular shape around 25. So then how do you aggregate all these together in order to gr get an answer to your question? And so this has actually been uh, addressed uh, by many people. And so we're going to look at a table of all the various researches on this. OK, so here what we're going to do is we're going to create a table. And so across the, the top of the table, this is going to be the integrand. So the integrand is the support of the question H. Across the rows of the table is going to be the fuzzy measure G. And so the, the fuzzy measure or the integrand can both take different forms. And so you have number-based integrand and we have a number-based fuzzy measure, which is what we just looked at. And that's been studied quite a bit. So obviously Sugeno had a big part in that. Uh, there's a scientist by the name of Gerbiche that had a big part of that. Uh, Dubois and Prad have done a bunch of work uh, with number-based uh, fuzzy measures of fuzzy integrals. Uh, Tahani and Keller did a bunch of work in using fuzzy integrals to uh, combine um, pattern recognition tools for image processing. Uh, but there's also been some work with the fuzzifying the integrand and or the fuzzy measure. And so across the top of the table we can have interval based uh, support of the question. So this is like the example up here where we have between 20 and 30 bottles of wine at the reception. Or we could have fuzzy set based answers to the question. That's like the fuzzy number up here, about 25 bottles of wine. So the work that's been done here is uh, primarily by Sugeno and Gerbiche, who both came up with interval-based uh, representations of the fuzzy integral, and we're going to go over those in a second. And then over here, there's been a bunch of work done specifically for fuzzy numbers. Um, Gerbiche and Sugeno did a bunch of work. And then there's also uh, a bunch of work done for the specific uh, application of pattern recognition by Sansani, and that's her first name because I cannot say her last name, uh, Keller, Gator, and then also uh, some very theoretical papers by Zhang and Wu for fuzzy numbers. For convex non-normal fuzzy sets, there's been some work done by Anderson and Havens, that's me, and Wagner. They came up with an inter integral called the NDFI. And then for type 2 fuzzy numbers, there's, there's been some work done by myself and uh, Anderson and Keller. And so we, we can also 
start to fuzzify the, the fuzzy measure G, and so there's been some work on for interval values of the fuzzy measure G, and so this is, means that like the worth of the information source is an interval valued um, or a fuzzy set valued. So in this case, uh, for continuous intervals, uh, Zhang and Zhao did some work. They also did uh, some work here, Zhang and Zhao, Let's say it properly this time. And then they also just extended it right across. Continuous intervals in the fuzzy measure and then I have a fuzzy set uh, in the support of the question in the integrand. Now if you get to fuzzy set valued of uh, the measures, uh, let's say that your fuzzy measure has fuzzy numbers as uh, the, the worth. Uh, Zhang and Zhao also did some work there. And then if you get to convex normal, which are just fuzzy numbers again. There's been uh, some work done also by Zhang and Zhao, and then also Wang and Li. And so you can see here that there's still a lot of places where this table has yet to be filled in because most people are doing work with fuzzy numbers in the fuzzy set category. Um, and then we've done some work on extending this to convex non-normal fuzzy sets and with uh, applications in anthropology and then also some type 2 fuzzy numbers um, here which is just more of a theoretical application but you can see there's a lot of room for uh, expansion upon uh, the fuzzy integral in, uh, in this field and for applications. Okay so let's see how this works. So there's a really important theorem that's going to come into play in defining some of these fuzzy integrals for, for intervals and, uh, fuzz and fuzzy sets is that if we have a function phi that is continuous non-decreasing then if phi is defined on an interval It produces an interval itself. So let's say we have an interval u and we're going to use the notation with the bar to indicate intervals. Then you can actually do phi, the function phi, on the endpoints of that interval. So we have the left point of that interval u left and then we have the right point of that interval u right and it's continuous between there. So this theorem becomes really important because we, we can use it to then to directly extend fuzzy integrals to the interval and fuzzy set cases. Okay, so let's look at this. So let's say we have, this is just one element of that table, a fuzzy integral with interval valued support of the question. So we call this the integrand. I'm going to use a bar notation for intervals. And we're representing each of these intervals just by left and right endpoints. And so h bar is a set of intervals. It's a set of support of the question. It's you asked all your friends how many bottles of wine do I need for my reception? And each of them gave you an interval, say between 20 and 30. So we can define the show k inter or excuse me, the fuzzy integral, not just the show k, but the fuzzy integral in general as the fuzzy integral on each of the endpoints of the sources. So what you have here are just two fuzzy integrals where each is done on numbers. So this is exactly like we learned in part one. 
just applied to the intervals. So rather than doing one fuzzy integral for a set of numbers, you're now doing two fuzzy integrals for a set of intervals. Okay, let's expand this a little bit. Let's say we're doing a fuzzy integral with fuzzy number valued integrands. I'm going to denote these h. So it's h is a fuzzy number function that uh, takes the universe of discourse and maps these to fuzzy numbers. Um, in this case, we're typically on the real line, although you know you could be between the 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 on the interval zero one if you want to stay there. We're just going to denote for brevity's sake that h sub i is the fuzzy number that describe that comes from source x sub i. And h sub i sub alpha is the alpha cut of that source. So you can probably see where this is going. Because the, if you recall, alpha cuts are just intervals. So as you can probably guess, the fuzzy integral on the integrand h when it has fuzzy number values is just the union across all alpha cuts of the fuzzy integral itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the alpha cut of the fuzzy integral then we can distribute the alpha cut into the integral and what we find so this is just the fuzzy integral on the alpha cuts. Or what we can do is we can just look at this piece individually and what we see is that the fuzzy integral on the alpha cuts is just a fuzzy integral on intervals and thus what we end up with is this. which is exactly what we learned above with intervals. So the fuzzy integral on fuzzy numbers itself is just a bunch of fuzzy integrals on intervals because as we know fuzzy numbers are just collections of intervals at each alpha cut. Okay, let's see some examples. Okay, what we have here are some examples of fuzzy integrals on fuzzy numbers. And so I'm showing these just because fuzzy integrals on fuzzy numbers are the same example for fuzzy integrals on intervals themselves because what we do is we break down each of the fuzzy numbers into its alpha cuts and then you're thus doing just a bunch of fuzzy integrals on intervals, integrals, intervals, all those things. Uh, and then the fuzzy integral on the interval is just two fuzzy integrals on the numbers, the, the endpoints themselves. So in the upper left, uh, I'm showing, th we have three fuzzy numbers there, um, something that looks like it's like about 0.2, about 0.4, and say about 0.8. And then we have the fuzzy measures uh, shown above there, the densities. And what I use is a Sugano lambda measure to fill out the lattice of the fuzzy measures. And the result of the fuzzy integrals are shown uh, below the plots of the fuzzy numbers themselves. So in the upper left, what we see is that the you know, the, the show K tends to tend towards the, the g source 3, because that has the higher density, and the Sugeno looks uh, very much like the show K, uh, produced in a different way. In the upper left, uh, we've given much more weight or worth to source 1, and you can see both results have now moved uh, towards the left uh, in this case. Uh, on the bottom left, um, we've given a lot of worth to source 1 and source 3, but very little worth to source 2. What's interesting about this example is you start to see the result of the max and min, specifically the min, happening in the Sugeno inter in integral. And that's why you see that sharp edge on the green line on the bottom left. In the bottom right, we've moved the three fuzzy numbers apart a little bit, and 
we're using the same uh, densities as we used in the bottom left, giving a lot of worth to uh, source one and source three. And so you see the result of the Shoke integral, and then you also see the result of the Sugeno integral. What's interesting about this is that the result of the Sugeno integral is actually a singleton. Um, it's, a, it's a number, it, there's only one number with a fuzzy membership, and that's a uh, fuzzy membership of one, and that happens at 0.7. And that's because it just happens so that the math works out here, that, that uh, with those maxes and mins, you end up with a, a singleton result. And so that just kind of shows you different things that can happen with the Shokei and the Sugeno and uh, why they look different.